Thank you for joining us. In our very first story this morning, the former moderator of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Reverend Dr. Yao Pimpon Mansong, has broken ranks with the church due to what he describes as gross disrespect. Now, according to him, his decision to serve ties with the Presbyterian Church of Ghana follows a decision by the church in Ghana to halt their relationship with the pro-homosexual Presbyterian Church of the United States of America. Reverend Dr. Frimpong Manson, who works with the U.S. branch of the church in a statement, said the church in Ghana failed to grant him audience before asking him to return home. He's been speaking to sister station Adom FM. Well, we'll bring you that particular soundbite subsequently, but uh, George Obinye J is lawyer for the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. He joins us he joins us on the telephone now with some more on this particular issue. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Please. So can you indeed confirm that the former moderator has severed ties with the church here in Ghana? Uh, I can only say that he has given the letter, a resignation letter, which I think we have discussed on your perspective, that he has written officially to the church, which has been received yesterday. They have resigned as a reverend minister of Presbyterian Church of Ghana. And uh, his resignation was supposedly over the church taking a stance on gay marriages uh, to, to the point of cutting ties with the U.S. branch or so? Uh, the point is that, yes, the church has taken a position in. Mr. BJ, if you, if you could reposition yourself a bit so we could hear uh, you properly. That is it. I'm also not using getting this call. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you now. Okay. Now, what I'm saying is that the church has taken a decision to serve a relationship with all partner churches that affect the or this marriage. Now, because the president of the U.S., we are not targeting any single individual. No, it is a church that has relationship with another church. You know, the Presbyterian church is independent church. It is not a church emanating from one source. It is the system we call Presbyterianism. It's a system of government. So we have relationship with churches that use that system of governance, where it is based on the equal number of lay or daily governance, or closely equal lay number of daily governance, based on council decisions. And therefore, churches that use that system of governance is referred to as a Presbyterian church. So mm. when there are other churches that use that system, we have relationship with them, which we call partner churches. Now, in 2011, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana took a decision that any partner church, any other Presbyterian church that we have relationship with, whether in Ghana or out of Ghana, you know, for instance, in Ghana, we have the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, and then we have the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. So, we also have other Presbyterian churches, even in the U.S., you have more than one Presbyterian church. But because we have taken this decision in 2011, that any Presbyterian congregation or church that we have relationship with, that decides to accept homosexuality, we will cut that partner to end that relationship with them. And that is what we say we serve as a relationship. So the church decided in 2011 President Church of Ghana, and then the Presbyterian Church of U.S. decided last year to accept... Hello? Yes, I'm listening to you, Leo Benji. To accept same-sex marriage last year. So President Church has informed them that we have several relationships in 2011 what we presented. Then our Reverend Minister, who is a senior minister, our former board director, was attended to the present U.S. to work. His time was due to come back, but the church was prepared to extend his portion for another six years. Another six years. So he 
wrote to the church, apart from the man, wrote to the church that he won Presbyterian Church of Ghana to grant him extension for another six years with the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. And the church said, no, because we have several relationships with them, and thank be to God, we are tied with the company, the church over there, that the Presbyterian Church of Ghana has ended. We want you to return and then be part of our team. And we go to him, the church to decision in August. When he will, and we give him the reply that he should come back by the day. We need to hear yesterday that he has sent an invitation to the church, that he will want to be with the Presbyterian Church of the U.S. And therefore, he has resigned as the Presbyterian minister. That is just a brief Okay, so, uh, Lawyer Benji, let me ask, how is it that a branch of the church, a branch of the church can actually go contrary to the decision of... Uh, of the point is that it is not a branch of our church that can go contrary. That's why I said that the Presbyterian Church of U.S. is a separate church from us. But the point is this. You see, you have Kenyans in U.S. who have formed a church. They have come together to form a church. But because some of them have their roots of Presbyterian Church of Ghana, when they form the church, some of them, they are independent churches, churches of their own individuals. There are some who want to associate with the Presbyterian Church. There are churches in the U.S. that are registered with Presbyterian Church of Ghana, but they are in the U.S. There are churches in the U.S. that are registered with the Presbyterian Church of the U.S. It is not Okay, so so if I get, if I get what you are saying correctly, you don't seem to agree with those who believe that uh, this suggests a clear lack of direction among the rank and file of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Not at all. Not at all. Mm. Not at all. It, it's a clear thing. Let me use this as an example for you. If if you are working with Joy FM, mm. and you are working with Joy FM, and you are working with Joy I think that point has been made. So, so essentially, what you are saying is that this is in no way going to affect uh, the church itself, the church here in Ghana, and uh, the, the clear vision of the church. That's what you are saying. Exactly. So, there is okay. no, it's not going to affect it. The only thing which we would have wished that it doesn't happen that way, that a senior minister of the church who has worked at one of the highest offices of the church. We wouldn't have wished for that. Is there a possibility of him returning to the church? But in terms of the church, no, it is not going to affect the church itself. The church works on structure. The structures are established. 
so, so Le 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 I, 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 I got that point. I just wanted to ask, uh, is there a possibility of Reverend Frimpon Manson coming back to the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, being accepted back into the church? That one, I cannot think. You know, even, let me just say, correct this. I'm one of the lawyers. I'm not just there. There are other lawyers. Okay. Of the but the point is that okay. the church work of structure. So he has written, and I've told you that the leadership is even yet to meet and take a decision. And then yesterday, he was on air explaining himself. And his so the church, you know, and the normal labor market, when you write in resignation, your employer, in this case, the president of China, to write a percent of the resignation or whatever. Mm. That is supposed to be decided by the council. When the council takes decision okay. of a person who said he wants to come back, then he must apply under normal circumstances. But now the church has not taken the decision. I just want to speak on record that yes, we have received the resignation. The council of the church will consider take a decision on it. And if he wants to come back, it depends on the decision and then whether he himself is even willing, he okay. must apply and say, even if you want to withdraw your resignation, he himself has to rise back and say for A, B, C. Okay. I will want to do right. this and that. Okay. Many thanks for your time. George Obiege is lawyer for the Presbyterian is one of the lawyers for the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. And I must say that we've been joined also on the telephone lines now by well. Reverend Dr. Oponi Frimpon, he's the General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana. Reverend, uh, many thanks for joining us, and indeed, my apologies for keeping you on the line for so long. And, uh, you are doing your job, so mm. let me say good morning and good morning to all the cherished listeners of Joy FM. Right. Thank you very much. Sir. So, uh, how do the processes work exactly? How does one resign from a church? Uh, let me say thank you for the opportunity, okay. but... I may not be able to take the position that the, your earlier, uh, um, the person you talked to, the lawyer. Well, he's a lawyer for your church, to, actually, for the president yes, of the church. Of I may one not of your be lawyers. able to go to that extent. I'm the general secretary for Christian Council of Ghana. Exactly. And let me say that the Presbyterian Church of Ghana actually is one of even the founding members of Christian Council. And therefore, whatever affects them, affect us. But let me say that uh, our member churches have their internal structures. The church like Presbyterian Church of Ghana has very strong internal structures to help them handle uh, challenges, uh, challenges like what we are addressing this morning. Mm. And we want to trust that they will be able to do that because there are many who love that church and respect that church. They command public respect. And so we as a council, we are praying with them. However, like we do with all our member churches, if they get to a point where they need help, they need the assistance of the other churches, and formally they invite us, then we'll get uh, into it. But I know at the moment we haven't reached anywhere near where a church like Presbyterian Church shouldn't be able to handle what is happening at the moment. And we know whether uh, they should uh, uh, talk behind the scene, do whatever intervention, mm. even to get our senior brother back and all that. I must also say, at the moment, all that we know uh, is what we have read from media, and we may not even know other things that they are doing behind the scene. But on the whole, we trust that the Church of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana is strong enough with strong internal uh, uh, structures to help them just handle this. Uh, they will be able to overcome, and we hope they move quickly and be on top of the issue. Okay, so so uh, if I get you right, that is the stance of the Christian Council on this particular subject? Uh, normally, that is what we do with all our member churches, and we will do the same with the Presbyterian Church. If they call for help, okay. we will intervene. But at the moment, they have not called for help. And we know and we trust that uh, the issue is not beyond them. So what, what, have, what, what, what kind of help are you likely to offer the Presbyterian Church of Ghana? Should they call for your help? Uh, the Christian Council, not only what we do with political parties, traditional leaders and all that, we are into mediation issues about reconciliation. 
you know, we do that with even sometimes political parties, uh, in governance and so many things, traditional leaders. Uh, business people sometimes will invite us that please intervene in this matter. You know, so if, if somebody invites, if the church or a member check like DDG invites us for intervention in terms of mediation mm -hmm. or in terms of reconciliation, healing wounds, uh, getting people to talk and getting people to uh, push issues behind them and uh, work towards healing process, uh, these are the things we are capable of doing beyond also praying with them and, and making sure that the church in this country stay focused, stay healthy, united, and serve God and the people of our country. Reverend Opening people, let me ask, is the Christian Council for or against gay marriages, gay unions in general? Uh, I, I hope that you are not asking this question because you are discussing the details of the matter. I, I hope this question you have asked stand on its own legs. Well, they are interrelated, so uh, depending on where you stand, you can choose uh -huh. to take uh -huh. it as a separate and, and let me say that the Christian Council at the moment wouldn't want to discuss the details of what is happening in the Presbyterian Church. However, mm. they have clear positions on, on, on same-sex union, and so let's discuss that, uh, not connected with the Presbyterian Okay, so, so what's the position of the Christian uh -huh. Council on this issue? Th th thank you, my brother. Now, mm. for us as the Christian Council of Ghana, same-sex marriage is unbiblical, it's un-Christian, and it's un-African. What it means is that uh, the Bible we read our understanding of marriage, same-sex union, cannot uh, be part of the definition. We don't, that is not our understanding of Bible. Two, for, for our people, I mean, for us as Ghanaians, as, as, as uh, Africans, the marriage that culturally we understand, same-sex uh, union, uh, we don't have track record, we don't have history, we don't have examples, we don't have from north to south, eastward, Ashanti, Kwaku, Everdown. We don't have history of Ghanaian traditional leaders, queen mothers, who have given us good examples of same sex union. And, and, and we don't have that in our heritage. So for us, it's a strange thing. Even though it's accepted elsewhere, uh, for us, we, we don't have history. Eh? We, we don't know it, and we don't want to learn it. So for Christian Council of Ghana, even though it's true, some people are practicing that. It's, it, it, it's a mistake that must be corrected. Mm. It's not a practice uh, uh, that, must be, that must be affirmed. And therefore, we are very clear on our position. So, so you, uh, do back, you do back the Presbyterian Church of Ghana's decision to sabotage with their counterparts overseas for actually endorsing gay marriages? Uh, Church, the point I'm making is, now let's discuss Christian Council of Ghana. Okay. If you wouldn't mind. Sure. Uh -huh. So for us, uh, even though our position on same-sex marriage is that uh, 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 we don't, that is not understanding of Bible, that's not the impression we gather from our cultural heritage, these people also need love, they need help, mm -hmm. nobody should attack them, they are part of, of us. Okay, so the so point is, you, you would wish none of your members encourages such a thing? Oh, exactly. So exactly. what, what, what happens that, to a member of your council that chooses to endorse same-sex marriages? Uh, uh, when we get to the river, we'll cross it. Uh, at the moment, we don't have that challenge. We, we can say we are almost at the river. So why don't we just address it now? Why also don't we wait till we get to the river? Like I was saying, we are almost at the river. We are why almost there, but uh, we are not there yet. Mm. But let me say that. Maybe let me use your platform to plead with, with our foreign donors, and government agencies and, and all that, that nobody should uh, uh, gradually find a nice way of pushing same-sex unions in even academic institutions. And government must be careful. Those who are giving support aid, and sometimes they want to tie same-sex unions as a condition for us, that this country must respect values of marriage. For us, marriage is a, a man and woman raising children. Uh, and we should not have a situation where a man, man, uh, a man, husband, wife, uh, raising children. We, we, we don't 
want to go that way is not part of us. It should never be part of us. Even if some people are practicing uh, that in our country, it should never be affirmed. Reverend Dr. Kwabno Punipimpo, many thanks for joining us here on News Desk on Joy News. We really do appreciate your time. And I must say, Reverend Dr. Kwabna Opuni Frimpon, he's the General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana, sharing uh, the Council's thoughts on that particular issue that has to do with the severing of ties uh, between the former moderator of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Reverend Dr. Yao Frimpon Mansum, and the local church here in Ghana. We'll make you much more on this particular story subsequently. But away from that, in less than 24 hours, University teachers across the country may begin an indefinite action over government's failure to pay their book and research allowance for the 2014-2015 academic year. Now, the teachers say several assurances by government to pay the allowances have not yielded any positive results, hence their decision to embark on the action on Friday. Let's get more on this from executives of UTAC. And uh, Dr. Harry Agbenu is the Legon president for University Teachers Association of Ghana. He joins us now over the telephone. Doc, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Doc. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Good morning. How are you? Again, many thanks for your time. And I, I also must, once again, must apologize for keeping you on the line for so long. Now, uh, okay. has it gotten to a point of embarking on another strike just to get your grievances addressed? Uh, not exactly. Uh, University Teachers Association of Ghana is not... So, sorry, but I, I think you might have to speak up a bit so we can hear you, sir. Yes, yeah, so what I'm saying is that mm. it is not exactly so. Okay. Uh, you, uh, you talk is not happy going on strike every now and then just to make sure that our book and research allowances are paid. We've been working with government. We've been talking with them. We've been, we've been with them all along. But the, the point is that every now and then they keep postponing. Tomorrow you'll be paid, then tomorrow comes, I mean, the next week and all that and all that. And what we are facing on our campuses is that our members are getting frustrated and are calling that we should do something. Uh, but we are trying to weather the storm to make sure that government pays us as early as possible. Uh, so uh, exactly what has government been telling you this whole time? Uh, we are working on it. Uh, we are in the uh, controller general. The, uh, what's the name? The controller and accountant general is, is, uh, is preparing the checks, whatever, whatever, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but today we have information that first batch of payment release and the second by stamp when next week so i think that that should that is a refreshing news so so as things stand now you are not going to embark on the strike tomorrow that is if you get your uh, money today that's what you're saying if fact that will be decided by the national they said that i am just the president for lego mm. uh, but for now uh, i'm not sure that uh, there will be need uh, for a strike once we are sure that the money will hit our accounts by next week. But are you sure the money is going to hit your accounts? Uh, that is that is the problem. So I'm that is not the problem. Sure, but the information okay. we have had so far indicates that uh, FCT will be issuing out the first batch today, and then uh, probably early next week the second batch. So if that is true then I think that there will not be any need for strike. As I said earlier, mm. we are not happy going on strike. We want to work. We have elected to, to do the work we are doing. And so uh, any strike disrupts our activities. And so we are not comfortable with that. Unless we are pushed to the wall, then the strike becomes the last resort. Lego Utah. Let me now speak. Uh, I, I'd like you to hold on briefly for me, sir, so I can speak to the ministry on this particular one. Uh, Francis Badago is the public is the public relations officer of the education ministry. Joins us also on on this same subject matter. Uh, matter, Mr. Badago, uh, thank you for joining us, sir. I'm grateful. So, uh, exactly why the delay this whole time? Uh, the university teachers tell us you keep on promising them yet failing. What's the reason for the delay? 
Thank you very much. Well, um, the delay is not caused by Ministry of Education. Rather, it, it, it's caused by Ministry of Finance. Usually, after a re, um, a agreement is reached between Ministry of Finance and then the Ministry of Education, and the National Council for Tertiary Education, in turn, uh, gives the opportunity to the individual <laughs> institutions to start submitting their audited claims. So as and when we receive the audited claims, we forward them to the Ministry of Finance for the payment processes to, to begin. And so the first batch that came, we, we had about um, 11, no, not, a, not about, exactly 11 institutions that were part of the first batch. And so, yes, uh, they worked on it very quickly. And so that is the very reason why they will be taking care of that one at the end of, uh, uh, let's say, today. Because the check has already, the amount has already hit the Education Ministry's account. And so uh, NCT is working very hard to ensure that the institutional checks are given to the respective um, universities. Mr. Badawo, I'm sure uh, I speak for a lot of uh, lecturers when they say that, well, this is not the first time we are hearing you say something similar to this. What are the assurances they have that this time around they are going to get their monies and indeed educa tertiary education in the country is not going to suffer for your quote-unquote, uh, well, le let me not use that word. Once again, let me assure the leadership of Utah that as much as we all understand that this involves a process. We are doing everything possible to ensure that there is a timely uh, payment of these allowances. Um, as I stated in my preamble, the first batch would soon be getting their check, and then the second and then the third batch is the control and account general department is working professionally on those ones as well. Okay. And so there is no problem. Mr. Wadawo, sorry I, for I, cutting I, in, but at one point you did mention that they, are, they will be getting their monies by close of day today, and uh, I hear you use the word soon now. So uh, where is the distinction? You see, when the money hit Ministry of Education's account, it does not take too much a time for the Ministry of Education to relay this to National Council for Tertiary Education. Okay. And so we also do understand from the NCT that when the money gets, on, when the check gets to their end, it should take them less than a day to prepare the, the, the institutional checks for this uh, institution. So that is why we are saying that they are not far from uh, getting their money, especially the first batch that involves uh, 11 institutions. And we are talking about 11 institutions, we are referring to Senior Polytechnic, Old Polytechnic, Sacred Polytechnic. Accra Polytechnic, Kofuria Polytechnic, and then Tamale Polytechnic in the Polytechnic category. Then the other universities, we have the University of Professional Studies, University of Mines and Technology, University of Cape Coast, Ghana Institute of Journalism, and then University of Health and Allied Sciences. They fall within the first batch. And okay. so they are not far from, from, from the payments. Okay, so, so they will be paid likely by close of day today or probably tomorrow? Uh, that depends on... NCT, as I said okay. earlier. Sure, I understand the, that. The, so what, what, what happens to the other batch then, the other, the other university teachers? Yes, the other institutions, um, the Ministry of Finance has equally authorized the Control and Account General Department to effect payment. And so they are working on that. Since okay, so, so that, that means earlier. they have not been paid yet? No, no. Not no. at all? They, their, their, their case has not reached this stage yet. But what it means is that since, uh, since Minister of Finance has given the authorization to, to pay them, within the shortest possible time, they should also go through. So shortest possible time as in a month or two or three, say six months? Well, controller has given us assurance. And uh, we believe that that should take, part, uh, take place within the shortest possible time. They, they, there is no need paying the first batch. Uh, and then ignoring the other batch. Second batch. That wouldn't happen, yeah. So. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ariak uh you've been listening to the PRO for the Education Ministry. Uh, what are your thoughts on what he says so far? Well, I, I, I want to say that, I mean, we, we don't differ too much of what he has said. But the problem is that if he can tell us 
when the audited uh, audited uh, play from the various institutions got to them, that has been about a month and over. And so if he's saying that the first batch that came earlier, that is what they are working on, that is not only true. Because the second batch also followed us, has followed just uh, after the, the first batch. The delay is just unnecessary. The delay is what is worrying everybody. That is how come the extension on our campus. So if, I, I don't know how long it will take for these processes to be concluded. We gave up to the the end of uh, September. October is about to end. And yet we are talking about authorization from here and all that. People are thinking that they are just buying time and wasting everybody's time. Okay. Mr. Badawo, can you answer directly? Mr. Badawo, if you can hear me, can you answer directly when exactly these teachers are going to be paid? Because it seems uh, my colleague on the other line doesn't seem to uh, have so much faith as to when they are going to be paid. When exactly are university teachers going to be paid? Yes. Um, you see, I stated earlier that the first batch, they do not have any problem at all. It was uh, very soon they will be paid. Well, but he, he, but he belongs the to the second, second batch. The second and the third batch. You know, Doc has just clearly stated, Doc has just clearly stated that the first batch went and then followed by the second batch. And so what it means is that when finance ministry received the first batch, they worked on it, okay. and the first batch was able to be ready as, as, as early as possible. Okay. The second batch also followed, and Ministry of Finance has equally authorized control and accountant general department to effect the payment. The third batch as well, Ministry of Finance has equally authorized control and accountant general department to effect the payment. We have those letters to pass. Okay. And so there is no way... Um, one can say that uh, we are deliberately delaying the system. No. We all know that in these public institutions, we have some bureaucracy here and there. And so uh, beyond that, we are doing everything possible to ensure that they are paid timely. Okay. Dr. Manu, uh, some reassuring words from the ministry. That should suffice for now uh, for you to call off the strike, right? Assurance is several, several times. And every now and then, they keep pushing the day. And what I'm saying is that there is plenty on our campus, and it's becoming impossible for leadership to hold us together. That is all that I'm saying. So if anything happens, they should not blame leadership. They should blame the system, the bureaucracy that he's talking about. So as things stand now, we still don't know whether or not you are going to continue with this strike action tomorrow? Come again. I'm asking, do we know for sure whether or not you call off the strike action uh, slated for tomorrow. We have not declared any strike. Mm -hmm. We haven't declared any strike. All we are saying is that if we are not paid by a certain time, we will withdraw our teaching services. We are not going on strike. We do a lot of things as lecturers, and teaching is one of those things that we do. But, so but if, we you are to not withdraw, if you are to we withdraw your teaching, teaching services, service. students on the various uh, tertiary campuses wouldn't be able to learn anything. That, uh, for and that me, is I that as a strike. And remember, we also have our children in this special institution. That's why I said earlier on that it is not. We are not happy when we need when we have to to withdraw such services. We are not happy ourselves. We have been elected to do this work, okay. and we are doing it with all our might in the service of our nation. So somebody should appreciate that we are doing our best for this nation. So what is due us? Should be given to us and on time, not at the whims and caprices of somebody sitting somewhere. That's all we are saying. If we, we are, something is due us, we should be given. The semester has ended. We are in the, uh, the, the next semester. The, uh, the academic year has ended. And another academic year is almost halfway through. And we have not paid for the, the past academic year. What are we talking about? Mm. Gentlemen, it's frustrating. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I'm sure we'll continue this particular discussion on uh, another platform another day. Many thanks for your time. Francis Badago is the Public Relations Officer of the Education Ministry, joined us with some answers as to why the delays. And we've also been hearing from Dr. Harry Agbanu, Legon Chapter, uh, UTAC President.
over there. We'll be getting you much more on this subsequently. But time now for us to take a break on news desk. When we come back, we'll bring you a lot more stories. Don't go away. <laughs>